G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Wayne Lander Bay Fishing. Planning trips. I want to do a series of videos on targeting the different species of estuary fish. So when I'm planning a trip, there's 10 elements that I basically cover before I leave my house. And the 10 elements are the seasons, the tide, the wind direction, barometer, probability of rain, Bite times, I'll always check bite times and I'll use an app for that. The location that I'm going to fish, whether I'm going to burly or not. The lure or the bait that I'm going to use in that location and the technique that I'm going to use in any given location. I think that's 10. Is that 10? We'll check it. But you can't talk about them individually because they all have a relationship with all the others. So I'll give you a quick rundown on each of the 10 elements that I, I just mentioned. Seasons, you've got a cool weather season and a warm weather season, then a crossover seasons. Now, you could look at that as being winter, summer as to your warm and your cool, and spring and autumn as your crossover, but it, it's not quite, that's not quite the way it works. Winter um, is, or the, or the cooler season quite often runs the last month of autumn, right through winter and into the first month of spring. The crossover season probably only four to six weeks and then you're into the warmer weather so the crossover seasons are quite short and you'll find that you'll get cross breeds in both tides we've got the height of the tide so the sizes of the tide how how high it is and how low it is both are important um, that also causes current flow through the tide weight in it but it is in current so yeah, i probably shouldn't call that early how good is that? I don't think it's a meter, but it's, it's a good fish. Um, the time of the day, you get your high tide or your low tide, and the direction of the current when the tide's running in, which way is it going in relation to which way the wind's blowing. They're the sort of things that I look for with tides. The moon phase, this is a big one. It, it, it's, it's a critical one because the moon phase, my favorite moon is a no moon. When there's no moon whatsoever, you get your really big tides, really low lows, and on a no moon, you've got a lot less interruption or a lot less spookiness for the fish. They'll be active, they'll be a lot less fearful of anything. With a full moon, you also have your big tides and your low tides. That's my next favorite. Throw shadows everywhere. Anytime a shadow moves, you'll spook a fish. So. Full moon's not quite as good as the, the no moon, but I like the three tides either side of the full moon, and I like the three tides either side of the no moon, but the no moon is definitely my favorite. A lot of these elements you can get from applications on your smartphones. Bite Times is a good one. There's a, a website called bitetimes.com. It's not an app, it's a website, bitetimes.com. And that's a really good one to check out. Have a look at it, and with Bite Times, it's basically mathematics around your moon phases. At some point, a nice big snapper will come along and beat the little pickers to, a, to the bait. Just need to be patient until then. My bite time today is uh, not until low tide, which is about seven o'clock. So that's my, my bait there with the squid. So it's a full small squid, 6A but must have beat. I just thread it through the bait and uh, have it nice and open down the bottom with a half inch up the top. That holds it really well. Bite times get better if the full moon or the no moon is is uh, highest it first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening, so dawn and dusk. If they're in the middle of the day, if you've got a full moon or a no moon in the middle of the day or the middle of the night, your bite times are a little bit less for that period. Barometer. Barometer is a funny thing. It, it, they say uh, barometer at 1020, you catch plenty. I don't like a flat barometer, I like a moving barometer. So if the barometer is going up or the barometer is coming down, that change of barometer, that change of pressure, it quite often triggers a better session. Now the location I fish for any species is dependent on all those other elements. I like to have the wind in my back. When you're casting, it's way more comfortable. You'll get better casts. You've got better control of your, your uh, retrieve. And it's comfortable. And at the end of the day, when you go fishing, that's a big thing. You want to be comfortable. Four o'clock in the afternoon. 
probably can hear the wind, but the wind's right in my back. We've got a north northwest blowing at probably 20 knots, maybe even 25 knots. So whenever you got wind like that, you definitely don't want to be fishing into it. But we'll do our best to uh, fish with the wind today. So as you can see, I'm casting up there. The tide's running out still. The wind's coming from the north, it's going across, and the bait's just drifting down the channel here by itself because it's got a little sinker. That little sinker's just a little O-sized sinker, so it's not going to stop the bait from doing its natural thing, but it will keep the bait down near the bottom, which is where I want to be. That's where the brim are. Oh, okay, now we're on. So wind direction's a very big thing. I do my best to keep it at my back, but there are some species, whiting for example, that you don't want the wind at your back. You want to be fishing face into a southeasterly. Southeast leaves with whiting seem to push all the whiting in nice and close. They come in along the shorelines on a high tide or a making tide to feed uh, on, on the pippies and the worms that are in close. I like a, a wind in your face for whiting, but that's probably the uh, exception to the rule. Okay, the bait that you're gonna use or the lure that you're gonna use. There are a million different lures that you can choose from these days on the market. I like the natural colors and I like the bait that's that's typical of the time of year so if mullet's running I like mullet as a real bait um, if there's plenty of herring around I'll use herring number two well, what we're catching is herring we've got a few to start with you can see here that's about four or five pulls up very very easy way to fish this is a um, sabiki rod so it's called a utg 732 sbk sbk sabiki utg is up the guts so you can see there's no runners in this the uh, actual sabiki jig sits in the middle of this blank and you can pretty much use any 10 pound line this is a 10 pound platypus so 10 pound platypus you put a sinker on the end as you can see in the, the video there so just just heavy enough to get to the bottom and then you just work your way around the pylons until you find a little school of herring prawns are running in the middle of the summer so from about december through to the, um, april may if the prawns are on the prawns are your go so you try and match the hatch in relation to your bait in relation to the lures same thing you use a prawn imitation when the prawns are on and as natural as I can get it. The only, in relation to artificial lures, the one thing I can say is that I will change the color of my lure depending on the color of the water. In the middle of summer when you've got that really dirty gray water that you've had a bit of rain, you've got all the muck pushing in up against the beaches and you've got dirty water, I'll use a darker lure. In the middle of winter, nice clean water, I'll use a nice light lure. Techniques. Every bait and every rig will have some bearing on the technique or the retrieve you use. Soft plastic you're going to retrieve differently to a hard, hard body. Um, a natural bait, a natural dead bait you're going to retrieve differently to artificials. A live bait you're probably going to let do its own work and not retrieve it at all. So the bait whether it be artificial or natural, it's going to be very dependent on the target species. Technique also goes to the way you, you actually attach it to your, your, your leader. So a really light presentation, artificial lure fishing for brim, for example, you might use a loop knot. Um, a heavier presentation for flathead, so you've got a heavier jig head, you might just straight on with a blood knot or a, or a uni knot. With a um, a large natural bait you might use a snell rig for example um, like a big mullet strip you're fishing for big flathead you'd use a snell rig when i'm bait fishing i really like to burly depending on the species it'll be a really heavy burly or a really light burly uh, if i'm brim fishing or snapper fishing the burly you you want lots and lots of burly but you want little bits often so i'll have a bucket of burly 20 kilo bucket of burly and through a two or three hour session, I'll probably use at least 10 kilos of that 20 kilo bucket of burley. Little bits often. So the trick to this is 
my burley bucket. Now there's just a little bottle of tuna oil. I buy tuna oil in uh, five litre containers from Popey down at Scarborough. Just did can it myself. Um, I've already put some tuna oil in this. That's just a mixture of um, horse feed and chicken pellets. And uh, a bit of bait in there as well. So letting that soak up the juices. And I'll use those baits next. Just a little bit like that at a time. Often. So you're getting a good burly flow. And hopefully at some point that'll attract the fish. So to put a bit of chicken on, it's as simple as this. Cut your chicken into a little cube, rectangle. One through the hook and that's it. So that's what fowl got. It looks like it comes like that in a little bag. That's what you'll see in the tackle shop. Take a bit of fowl gut out. I'm quite generous with my fowl gut, so that's probably what's that about 15 centimeters or I don't know seven or eight inches. And then you just thread it on. And that's the finished bait. Very attractive to Brim, not so attractive to us. So mullet gut also comes in a packet just like the fowl gut. It's brown. And you get little onions. So they're solid as a rock, these onions. The Brim absolutely love them. And what I do with these, push the hook through once at the top. Expose the barb. And that's it. And that's ready to uh, cast out and find a lovely brim. So with the singles, your baits can be a little bit smaller. What I like to do is go through the middle. Come back through just the once and push the hook in a little bit. And you've got the half hitch at the top that secures your bait. Put a second half hitch on it if you want to, but you, most of the time you don't need to quite a good bait and that's how it sits so you can see you've got good exposure on the hook your bait sits nice and straight and it's a nice firm bait so it'll stay on for quite a long time throw the shell and the juices run into the water a little bit of burley can't hurt the bait so just I start at the top and just thread it through three times doesn't need to get more complicated than that and that's ready for the next fish take a bit of worm always be generous with your worms got to keep the tackle shops employed picked up these worms this morning from tackle land at Sandgate Mark Templeton down there really looks after you. So a nice healthy bit of worm. Make sure there's a bit left over hanging over the barb of the hook. Straight through, down the middle of the hook. Wind it all the way on. Just come out toward the bottom. That covers your hook. So there's the first one. You can see the worm goes all the way to the top of the hook. If um, you can, just take it above the hook and make sure that barb's exposed with a little tag at the bottom. So they're the prawns obviously before you pull the heads and tails off and shell them. They're the prawns after it. It's quite fiddly so I'm not going to do it on camera but I won't tell you how to suck eggs. Very easy to peel a prawn. Just knock the heads off, knock the head off, the tail off and then just unwrap the shell around it. Very easy to do. So we'll go up to the second hook on the rig and we'll put the peel prawn on. Start at the tail, wind it straight onto the hook and there you have an excellent wadding, wadding rig all baited up ready to roll. These, these prawns are quite small, so I'd probably throw a second one on there. So there's the business end. You can see the bottom hook with lovely worm, top hook with a prawn. Obviously, if you're using this rig and you're catching everything on the prawns, you'd change over to the prawn and vice versa. You only need one yabby. You can see how it's got little creases in its tail. The second or the third crease down, just through once. 
and that's it that's all you need hopefully the warning comes along sucks that straight down takes the hook in with it you can do it a few different ways through the tail once take it through through the tail twice slide it up through the tail third time then it sits down the shank of the bait keeper so I'm using the whole pillie I'm cutting it up in three bits throw on the head away I'm not using the head what I'm doing with the body the two bits of the body there's a tail two bits of the body the body I'm just doing a light pin through the top and that's it nothing more or less than that cast nice and gently so it stays on the hook and hopefully a big enough fish comes along and takes the whole bait all in one so there's my four bits of pilly. I use these three bits I throw this in for burley you can use the head and um, I often do use the head but I've got plenty of bait today so I use the head for burley and uh, the other three bits of bait tails probably my preferred stays on a bit easier but these two chunks definitely work so with the tails you can see this just once right through the end well, that brings us to the end of another video thank you very much for watching subscribe to the channel hit the like button for me and i'll catch you on the next video take care